The mission, if you choose to accept it, is to know that Mission Impossible is the better action franchise. Your franchise is up against the Die Hard trilogy. It's a Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise has some personality. Outside of action movies, Bruce Willis's catalog is Look Who's Talking and Look Who's Talking To. Tom Cruise is this wee little man. I feel like I could pick him up, throw him in the air, and he would just drift off into the netherworld. That's a thing, right? Bruce Willis is rough and tumble. He's got some meat on the bones, and I appreciate that. I appreciate an action hero that I believe in. Yeah, there's plenty of meat in Die Hard, but where's all the gorgeous women? Mission Impossible, like James Bond, knows how to put females in the cast. Having women in the film takes away time. Bruce Willis could be better spending snapping necks and throwing bodies downstairs. Welcome to the party, pal. Let's talk villains. Hans Gruber, all I need to say, but I'm gonna say more. It's played by Alan Rickman. His first performance in a feature film blows everybody away, and he's still the best villain to date. So Die Hard had one villain back in the late 80s. Mission Impossible, John Voight, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman, right up there with Alan Rickman. Simon says, shut your dirty whore mouth, Corey. Apparently you forgot Jeremy Irons is in this film, or as he's better known as, the voice of Scar from Lion King. The cast just keeps getting better and better with every Mission Impossible movie. You have the addition of Simon Pegg in 3 and 4, Jeremy Renner, and not to mention Ving Rhames, Diamond Dog himself. Deep Blue Sea's Samuel L. Jackson, the Mac guy, and Carl Winslow from Family Matters all say hi. It takes a great cast to get you into the mindset that is Mission Impossible. It actually makes you think it's not just broken windows and car explosions. Die Hard is ranked on the IMDb Top 100 list. Mission Impossible, however, nowhere to be found. Mission incognito. Mission nowhere. Mission other things. I think the reason Die Hard works so well from a story level is John McClane is so relatable. He's always put in these terrible situations and he has to find the smartest way to get out of them. Much like you or I would do. Which is kill everybody in the room. Yeah, in Die Hard 1 he's Mr. Everyman, but by the fourth one he's a freaking superhero. I wouldn't be surprised if Die Hard 5 had a tool belt and a vehicle called the Tumbler. So his character gets a little shifty in Die Hard 4. I think everybody can agree that's the weakest of the pack. But let's not forget Mission Impossible 2. I'll give MI2 this. Tom Cruise's hair, a masterpiece. I eat it up. The entire mask theme through all the Mission Impossible movies was awesome. Like a fine wine, the effects of Mission Impossible get better with age. From the tunnel scene in Mission Impossible 1, to jumping off the world's tallest building in Ghost Protocol. Die Hard is unmatched when it comes to awesome set pieces and effects. He's the MacGyver of movie action heroes. In the first movie, he jumps off of a building with a fire hose. In the second, he's ejected from an explosion. The third, he slices a guy in two by bungee jumping off of a bridge. And in the fourth, he kills a helicopter with a car. The Die Hard franchise can't hold a candle. It's all the different types of weapons and gadgets in the Mission Impossible franchise. McLean uses a fire hydrant to kill two guys. That's his gadget. Everyday appliances, he makes them. So basically John McClane is Kevin McAllister from Home Alone, just growing up. Corey's Tom cruising for a bruising, if he thinks M.I. has any chance of winning the musical category. Coming up now. Just go ahead and give me the music category. Mission Impossible theme song? That's as memorable as Jaws or Indiana Jones or even Star Wars. Die Hard's composer, Michael Kamen. His body of work includes the Lethal Weapon franchise, X-Men, The Last Boy Scout, and of course the biggest action film of them all, Mr. Holland's Opus. So I think the guy knows a thing or two about how to compose a goddamn action movie. Lalo Schiffman's won four Grammys for his theme song, and he also gets help from Hans Zimmer in Mission Impossible 2. Hans! Thanks for that. The guy's got a freaking star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But let's not forget about the soundtracks to all these movies. You've got Limp Bizkit, Metallica, Godsmack, Rob Zombie. Talk about action movies. Action soundtrack. So this is how low Corey's gotten on this show. 
He's listing off bands that were popular in the late 90s to justify the movie. I don't even know if half those fucking songs are in the film. It's been all downhill since Die Hard 1, but Mission Impossible is getting better with every new release. I'd call that mission accomplished. You'll never get what you want! You don't think I'll do it! This has honestly been the biggest waste of my time. Nothing is comparable to the Die Hard franchise. Nothing ever will be. And for Corey to say otherwise is just a complete joke. Let's bury him in the comments. Yippee-ki-yay, movie feuders.